So one of the things I get asked quite a lot are, is what are, what are the best DevOps tools? I get, I get asked that quite a lot, actually. So according to me, the best Dev, DevOps tools, uh, there's four of them that I use across multiple engagements. And I find that they solve most problems for me. They solve most problems at different scales too. They solve most problems startup scale. They solve most, most problems at the enterprise scale. And these tools are all open source. They're all free. They're all easy to get started with. However, their difficulty does scale with size. So they get a little bit more complicated as the size scales, but eventually that complexity and the learning curve behind them actually plateaus out at a certain point. And you can just keep getting bigger and bigger infrastructures whilst these tools remain very well understood once you've gone through a certain learning curve now these these tools are you know according to me i'm not i'm not saying that these are the the one and only tools that you should be using from a from a devops perspective it's obvious that there are obviously going to be other tools that people are going to want to use other than these tools but well, these are the tools that have worked the best for me i will say that i find it very hard to believe that these tools can't work for everyone again they've worked for me in startups they've worked for me in enterprises I've done tiny infrastructure, huge infrastructures. I've worked in governments. I've worked in private sector. Uh, I've worked on thousands of nodes. I've worked on tens of nodes, worked on a few nodes. And so these, these tools will generally solve most problems, but it, it, it's kind of up to, you know, it, it depends on what you want to achieve. But talking about the tools specifically, these are the, these are the best tools as far as I'm concerned. And the first one is Terraform. Infrastructure as code, can only be can only be really be done with Terraform without a doubt. Like there's no other tool comes close. I've not okay. I've not looked at every single tool that's available on the marketplace, but Terraform is by and far the best one that I've used for several years now. Again, across various different sizes of infrastructure, from from massive to, to tiny. Terraform is really easy to learn. It's very easy to get up and running with. I've actually got a crash course on Terraform as well. It's about 40, 45 minutes long. But go check it out if you want to get a quick crash course obviously in Terraform that's why it's called a crash course uh, however it is very simple to pick up and get working with you can use it on multiple clouds you can use it at different scales it's got module support it's now developing a really large community it's been out for several years it's mature you know you're not working with alpha software here it's got a commercial entity HashiCorp as it says right there HashiCorp are the company that made Terraform and they are they back it and it has commercial offerings behind it as well. So if you need support or some kind of enterprise equivalent of Terraform, you've got Terraform Cloud and things like that, it's available. It's all there for you. So don't be afraid to adopt software like Terraform. So Terraform is, is multi-cloud, really easy to understand, very specific tool built for a very specific job, and that is infrastructure as code. And as we know, infrastructure as code is where the future is that's where everything is moving towards so what's the next tool the next tool is ansible so when it comes to configuration as code again i don't think anything really comes close quite frankly infrastructure as code is where it's terraform's domain configuration as code is ansible domain yeah you've got puppy you've got chef you've got salt and, I, and i'm sure that they're absolutely fine however what i love about ansible is there's two primary things is its default architecture is a push based model so it's going over ssh and it's pushing the configuration to the remote hosts so there's no centralized architecture at all puppet chef and salt by default will have a centralized architecture where you have some kind of master that gives all of the little minions as they're called in salt their instructions However, Ansible doesn't have anything like that. And so it doesn't actually require any additional hardware networking or setup or architecting at all to get running. So that's why I prefer Ansible. And the second reason is the learning curve is actually much, much shallower than those other tools. Again, because there is no infrastructure to set up. Actually, a third reason as well is the security around it so because there's no centralized architecture and because you can already reuse your ssh connectivity into your linux infrastructure and you can use winrm in windows there's very little in the way of security to be involved you've just got to make sure that communication on those specific specific channels is actually secure so in the ssh sense you've just got to make sure that you're using ssh keys and that you're locking ssh down to a specific set of ip addresses for example What's next? 
another HashiCorp tool, Packer. So when you're building infrastructure in AWS, you're going to be building EC2 instances if you just need raw compute. And you're going to need an AMI to do that, an Amazon machine image. And that AMI is going to contain an operating system. But on top of that operating system, it's also going to contain packages and so on and so forth. Packer is literally designed for building machine images such as AMIs, and it's the best, the best at doing it. It can reuse your Ansible. We've just spoke about Ansible. It can reuse that Ansible in order to configure those AMIs for you. So Packer, you basically write out a template and you say, okay, I want an AMI. I want it to be, I want you to build it. I want you to call it this. I want you to base it off of this AMI. And then I'm going to add to that AMI. And then you use the provisioners, which can be shell provisioners and all kinds, but you'd use Ansible, obviously. Why wouldn't you? Uh, and you run, you'd run your Ansible against that AMI and you'd update the operating system, install all the packages you need, put authorized SSH keys on there, lock down SSH, install, fail to ban, and you do all kinds of things and you'd get an AML, AMI at the end of that pipeline, sorry. So here's the thing, right? What a lot of people do is they build an AMI with Packet and then they kind of just put it on the shelf and go, great, oh, yeah, nice, that was really cool. What they fail to realize is that if you put Packet in a automated pipeline and you put it on a schedule and you run it every single night, it's going to be updating that AMI for you every single night. It's going to be updating the kernel and all of the packages, provided that that's a safe thing for you to do. You have to determine that yourself, but it's going to be giving you the latest packages every single night. And then in your Terraform code, in your Terraform code, what you can actually do is you can reference when you're building EC2 instances. So when your infrastructure scales in or out, you can actually fetch the right AMI based on tags. So as Packer is updating your AMI for you, it's also updating the AMI ID and your Terraform code is discovering that AMI ID during execution time and it's always using the latest version. So Packet is an extremely powerful tool for building your machine images and it's never failed me at all. The fourth tool that I recommend to tie all of this together is GitLab. GitLab for me is pretty much the only tool, the only, Git, the only version control system that is both hosted and self-hostable and has full enterprise support and you get both in both. So the hosted version, you can pay the whole $99 a month for the highest package possible per user and you get everything and you get all these fancy enterprise grade features. You can do the exact same thing with the hosted version. Now, I understand that you can self-host GitHub as well, but I've never tried that, so I don't know what that ships with. However, I actually think that GitLab is much more feature rich anyway. I think it's better than GitHub. I think the interface it's better than GitHub, and I think overall the built-in features is better than GitHub. I definitely think that the CI implementation is better than GitHub. So for me, Terraform, Ansible, Packer, all looped into being stored, having their code stored in GitLab, were also automated by that CI stack that's built into GitLab. It's just a dream team. These four things are just a dream team. I don't see any other reason to use any other tools at this point in time. If you're looking to study and get into DevOps and you need to, and you need a specific set of tools that you need to get into, here they are, here's all four of them, Terraform, Ansible, Packer, and GitLab. There really is nothing else, honestly, to be concerned about. If you've got any questions or you want to come and troll me in some way, or you want to come and question what I've said and challenge me, that's absolutely fine. Then pop on over to our Discord server. So go to thecloud.coach slash community. I'll have a I'll have a link to that. Come on over. And if you like this video, then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for more videos and, uh, and head on over to the Discord and uh, let's have a chat.